Let's stand together and join in worship as the band leads us. We're here in the presence of our holy God. Pretty amazing, isn't it? We can only approach God through the cross, where our sins are paid for and our, we are washed clean and we are made righteous. We have to go to the cross often as God reveals more to us about ourselves and about himself and about his ways. And so let's sing, lead me to the cross. Savior, I come, I hid my soul, remember, redemption still, where your blood was spilled, for my ransom. I will worship I 
I will worship with all of my heart. With all of my heart. I will praise you. I will praise you. With all of my strength. With all of my strength. I will seek you. I will seek you. All of my days. All of my days. I will follow all of your ways, all of your ways. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise, my praise. There alone I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. I will bow down. Hail you as king. Hail you as king. I will serve you. I will serve you. Everything. Everything. I will lift up. I will lift up. My eyes to your throne. My eyes to your throne. And I will trust you. I will trust you, trust you alone, trust you alone. I will give you all my worship, I will give you all my praise, my praise. You alone I long to worship, you alone are worthy of my praise. I will give, I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise, my praise. You alone I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. Good morning. I have to embarrass my sister, who is here with me today, I'm um, over there with my wife, Sandy, my sister, Linda, and her husband, Neil. Welcome. They came from, down from New Hampshire. They're not that far away, but two hours is two hours, you know? <laughs> so I'm just happy to have her with us. Yeah. The call to worship, protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to, to the Lord, Lord you are my Lord. I have no God apart from you. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you, you do, do not, not give, give me up, up to show to shield, or let or the faithful, faithful one see, see the, pit. the pit. You show, show me the path, the path of life. life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Thank you. Please be seated. You know, we say some pretty, good, pretty radical things just in a call to worship, that we have no good apart from you. That's pretty radical, but then we recognize this world is fading. This world is falling apart. And uh, everyone in the world says we ought, to we ought to honor and recognize seems to suddenly... Uh, take feet of clay. So uh, we have no good apart from the Lord. It's good to be part of a church that prays. Thank you all for sending emails and you let me know with notes and such. And we're glad to be uh, praying together for one another. And it's good to, to share those. And uh, you've got an email address if you want to send some to us. Check, find me before the service. I'll add yours, yours in as well. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you answer prayers. What a sweet thing it is to see early in the week a prayer request and by the end of the week uh, a thanksgiving for answered prayer. Lord, for Steve Bryant's heart valve replacement going well, for Jane Murray recovering, for a woman with an aneurysm that required a tricky procedure and that procedure went well. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're grateful for family and friends, grateful for the opportunities we have in our day to be able to travel, we remember when that couldn't happen, and we're grateful. 
Lord, thank you for, for your mercies. And thank you that you put uh, your love and sprinkle it throughout the world. That's just your general common grace. And we pray, Lord, that we might uh, learn of you how to love well. Thank you for the cross. Lord, there are many who need your healing touch. We do pray for Pete, that you would give him strength and recovery. For Karen Santafondi, thank you for the progress she's making. And continue to be with her, Lord. Remember Debbie Stewart in very difficult times now. Hold her close and her family. Her sons, Jay and Greg, hold them close. Um, be with Claire's mom and all her family in these days. For Russ with broken ribs. For Dottie Payne, home from the hospital, still needing your touch. And Lord, we pray your comfort on those who are grieving. Friends and family of Jermaine Dominico. And also for Sandy Browder and Susan Fitzpatrick and all their family and the, the friends as well of, of their brother Frank. Lord, hold them in your care in these times of tenderness. We thank you, Lord, that you are one with great compassion and you love the whole world. We pray, Lord, for recovery and and grace to rebuild in the, in the lands of Turkey and Syria where uh, the earthquake did such damage. Bless those reaching out in your name. Um, let the rebuilding be not only physical and structural, but spiritual, personal. We pray, Lord, for uh, the situation in Ukraine and all places where tyrants would, would seek to imprison and, and, and uh, rule with tyranny over others and uh, that you might have that relief for them. For the impact of the Jesus Revolution movie, Lord, and, and each effort to uh, speak to our culture. Lord, awaken those who have uh, forsaken their first love and remind them that you are still real and good and true. Help us, Lord, to look at those who may dress differently or anything else, but who are really seeking those things that you want us to seek a life of grace, a life of love, a life of, of worthwhile pursuits. And help us, Lord, in our outreach to love in tangible ways so as to help hearts open to their eternal needs. We ask your grace on members, the, family, the families, the friends of this congregation, that we might be equipped to show your love to those in pain especially. Guide us, Lord. Guide our nation. Guide those in positions of responsibility that may deal with, rule with justice and righteousness. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I want to say a word of welcome to those who are joining us via live stream and, and just know that as we do our, uh, our time of giving, you know, we, uh, some people will, there's, a, there's plates in the back and there's also a uh, opportunity for us to uh, give by means of the uh, QR code or simply folks mail it to the church. But the idea is that we are showing that the Lord is Lord of our finances. We want all that we do, all that we say, to be what honors him and builds an eternal kingdom. And so we want to show he's Lord in how we give, but also in how we use it. We want it to be with integrity. Let's dedicate our gifts to God. Oh Lord, we thank you that you grant us resources. Help us to be compassionate toward those struggling. Give wisdom to those in financial bondage. And also, Lord, would you use the gifts we bring to further your kingdom, 
where grace abounds, mercy, redemption. Lord, may our efforts, funded by these gifts, bring a word of peace to the troubled soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with us and we'll sing together, Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Sunday mornings, nothing like a Sunday morning. What do I do on Sunday mornings before I get to church? I walk and I talk to God. I send my children texts because they don't want to hear from me. No. <laughs> it's the way they listen and it's the way I can get their attention. I send them texts with scripture on Sunday mornings. And I text them every day telling them that I love them because you can't always tell them that in person because they're busy and so are you. So text your kids, tell them you love them. They'll text you back, okay? And when they're in trouble, they will text you and ask you a question. <laughs> but God's word is just so amazing and his love is so incredible that I'm always overwhelmed when I'm walking on Sunday mornings in the dark with a flashlight in the Hanson streets. But it's a special time, okay? And he always gives me some kind of word. And his word this morning was, most people know Jeremiah 29, 11, but Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if you seek me, you will with all your heart, you will find me. So I have a question for you this morning. Are you seeking him with all your heart or are you just looking around? Ask yourself what you're doing. He loves you so much, it's incredible. And even if you walk in the wrong direction, he'll come and find you. And that's the story this morning with Jonah and Nineveh. He's looking for them to repent. He will forgive you. Okay, just ask him. Be clean, be fresh. Text your kids, tell them you love them. You know, it's important. God loves you, so do I. Anyways, this morning's word <laughs> is from Jonah 3, 4 to 10. Jonah began to go into the city going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh will be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. 
When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had proclamation made in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. No human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. I shall turn from their evil ways, all shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from the evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you, guys. <clears throat> you know, it's a season of reflection. Been uh, doing some looking toward a Holy Week, Palm Sunday, uh, be the 2nd of April, um, 8th and 9th will be Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Monday, Thursday, still shaping up the uh, communion service and special music from the choir. Good Friday is going to be at 7 o'clock at night this time um, and very much a meditative time. Remember Easter sunrise morning, 6.30, we'll be down at, at Lake Monponsip and uh, on that nice area in front of the water uh, by uh, the inn at Monponsip. And uh, then real festival worship here at 10. But to get there, we need to do the work of appreciating. And, uh, and that's part of what Lent is. It makes us reflect. Now, some things that ought to make you think don't, and uh, I'm going to start with a, talking about a bug, and that's, uh, some would say that the praying mantis is the official insect of Christmas. You knew that, right? <laughs> Not because they appear to be such religious critters. Striking a pose that resembles, at least to those with an uh, active imagination, a person kneeling in prayer. It's not the reason they're associated with Christmas at all. And by the way, it's, it's also possible to talk about the birth of Christ not in December. We can do that. But the reason the praying mantis is associated with Christmas is the interaction between male and female. As you probably know, when the male praying mantis has finished being of service to the female, opening the pickle jar, making shelves, you know what I mean. The female shows her gratitude by doing what? Yeah. Eating her, eating him, yes. And for this reason, if you see a male praying mantis heading over to his lady friend's house for a date. Come on, give me that next one. A little subtle difference. There we go. <laughs> you might be tempted to dissuade him from his intentions. Don't do it, buddy. <laughs> She'll eat you alive, literally. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no recorded case of a human being ever successfully persuading a male praying mantis to turn aside from his romantic pursuits. Why would that be? Because no recorded case of a human being speaking in a language a praying mantis can understand. Now, in order to be understood by a praying mantis, you would have to become a praying mantis. Now do you see the Christmas connection? I found this one. Let's, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you, male or female, are like the male praying mantis. You and I, we were heading down a path to destruction, and God wants us to save us from the consequences of our bad choices. We don't, we don't keep our promises. We, we become so self-concerned that we cause pain to the people who should mean the most to us. You know, it's as true today as it was 40 years ago when Billy Graham said, for all of the technological progress by the human race, there has been no moral progress. It was always thus. God has always desired to persuade men, women, and youth to choose a better path. But merely sending the message through the lips and actions of mortal prophets was not accomplishing the task. So God put on flesh. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. To show us to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And that saving action didn't stop with his being born in a stable. Jesus taught us about the kingdom of God and died to pay the penalty for the sins of everyone who would believe in him. But it was crucial for people to believe in him. And one problem was people didn't even know what they were missing. And we see that in today's gospel reading from Luke eleven twenty seven to 32. While Jesus was saying this, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you 
and the breasts that nursed you. But he said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. When the crowds were increasing, he began to say, this generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And see, something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah. And see, something greater than Jonah is here. So, so what is this sign of Jonah? There were two passages I could have read from where Jesus talked about Jonah. Today's purpose, I chose this one. But Matthew 12, 40 actually explains the sign itself. Just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a sea monster, so for three days and three nights the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. This is one of the times when Jesus predicts not only his own death, but also his resurrection. What's unique here is he's explaining the purpose of the resurrection. What I, hope you have you, what I hope to have you see this morning is that Jesus' resurrection is God shouting, Turn around to travelers on a dead-end road. In his wonderful books about life as a rural veterinarian in Yorkshire during the mid-20th century, James Harriet describes his boss as prone to a bit of showmanship. Siegfried Farland would place two chemicals in the center of a horse's infected hoof solely to have the owner see a violent purple sputter and fizz that came out from it. It had no legitimate beneficial medical purpose whatsoever. But it did convince the unsuspecting farmer that modern medicine was worth every penny. Was there a legitimate purpose to the signs and wonders which Jesus performed? Was this merely showmanship, sleight of hand magic? Considering Jesus told the apostles that they would do even greater things, he seemed to be sure they had a purpose. And the book of Romans, St. Paul described his apostolic career this way. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the Gentiles, the non-Jews, by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem as far around as Illyricum, I have proclaimed the good news of Christ. Jesus did not perform miracles to fascinate and entertain. King Herod, you might know, was pleased to have Jesus on Good Friday come to him during his trial because Herod wanted Jesus to tickle his fancy and amuse him with some impressive trick. Luke records it. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he'd been wanting to see him for a long time. He had heard about him, was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. So if you think the Son of God gave up his glory to entertain you, you are not taking life and death as a matter of life and death. When the religious leaders say, we wish to see a sign from you, Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. The purpose of the signs and wonders is to testify and convince. I urge you, as I said before, if you can, go this week to the theater in East Bridgewater or any of the others that are showing the movie, The Jesus Revolution. Certainly the greatest American move of God in the 20th century. As happens so often when God is on the move, signs and wonders, miracles, accompanied this great outbreak of the Spirit. Millions of young people came to faith. 
It's just like on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' crucifixion. Simon Peter stood up to explain to the crowd the miracles that they were saying. He said, men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs, which God performed through him in your midst, you crucified, but God raised him up. The man attested to you by God by signs and wonders. Jesus says as much in the passage we're looking at today. Do you think I'm doing these things for my health? <laughs> Watch, learn, and respond accordingly. He's dealing with politics, the self-seeking of the crowds and the religious leaders, and none of them realize that he has purposely set his face toward Jerusalem because he's going to die there if it kills him. Queen of the South, the Queen of Sheba, lived during the height of King Solomon's rule. Solomon had received God, wisdom from God at a level unseen in the world. Just the wisdom of his judgments and decisions alone were signs enough for a vastly powerful woman to drop everything and travel from the Horn of Africa to learn a better way of life. That indicates she could tell they were of beyond human origin. She turned and made a difference. You might have read last week, I think it was Monday, six right whales found themselves going up the Cape Cod Canal. Bob read for us what happened after Jonah was spewed up out of the mouth of a whale. It's hard to imagine that word didn't get around about his rather unique travel arrangements in order to arrive at the shores of Nineveh. The miracle testified to the veracity of the Ninevites' need to repent in a hurry. And they were convinced. They saw the sign, understood it, and acted accordingly. In your outline, the first word under number two is convince. It's not related to the last word of 1B. I, my usual approach in a sermon is to make sure I address the need of the skeptic to be convinced. The age we live in likes to treat all records of miracles as if they're nonsense. But, you know, a lot of us, we don't believe in miracles. We rely on them. And sometimes you find yourself relying on them and God comes through. What if you were one of the 10,000 residents of the city of Nome, Alaska. It swelled during the Alaskan gold rush. In January of 1925, when an epidemic of diphtheria was spreading through the entire city. A quarantine. Do I need to explain what a quarantine is? Oh. <laughs> Slowed the spread. But the entire population of the town was likely to be erased. The necessary amount of antitoxin made it to the coastal city of Seward. But Nome was 674 miles away. 20 dog sled mushers, in partnership with about 150 sled dogs, traveled the distance in five and a half days, saving not only Nome, but also surrounding communities from the developing epidemic. One of the lead dogs, there was even a movie, Balto, there's a statue of him in Central Park. But another lead dog, Togo, traveled four times the distance and is known as the most heroic dog of all times. Signs are theirs. Miraculous things happen all the time. If you don't think it was a miracle, uh, did I mention it was January, that Nome is only two degrees south of the Arctic Circle and the average high temperature today there is 13 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. You know, uh, maybe you read this week, Diane Webster blessed this church with a devotional meditation for March 8th, A Light in the Darkness, about an unexpected way God came through for the church during the, the COVID's worst. Noel Stuckey once said, with miracles, it's not so much what happens as when. Signs are there for, for those who want to see them. 
But sometimes we're afraid. We've seen that miracles are attended by, intended by God to testify to the goodness of God. He shows us that he loves us with the goal of winning our hearts back to him. He'll do fine without us. But his love motivates him to want us to be rescued from ourselves. And we do need rescuing. The problem is that unless we turn our hearts back to God, we are pursuing the kingdom of self. And that's a deception. <clears throat> Think of the insanity that took over the life of Howard Hughes. Once the richest man in the world, he died in isolation and his money couldn't save him. You know, thousands upon thousands of people who taste a little success have ended up dead or destitute because they thought they could now indulge the cravings now that they had money. Like the ring in Tolkien's trilogy, that which we think gives us great power when we possess it ends up controlling us. There is a kingdom of evil just as real as the kingdom of God. It's a lie, a lie of hell that says you can be happy by focusing on what you want. My father used to quote Ben Franklin, the man in love with himself will have few rivals. But God doesn't want us to be miserable. Jesus provided the solution to the dead end kingdom of self with a sign that changes minds. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. All these things meant food, clothing, everything else we need. God knows us. God made us. God loves us. He knows what we need, how to get it to us, and he wants to provide it for us. The solution to the deceptive kingdom of self is to prioritize seeking the kingdom of God. If he's king, that makes you or me an obedient subject. In our gospel reading, Jesus is upset with the crowd. Because they aren't responding correctly to the phenomenon of the coming of God's Messiah, the Savior, Christ. He said that a sign bigger than the miracles that he's done and he's referring to the resurrection. That sign is coming. And the way they've reacted already is a pretty good indication of how they will react once he's risen from the dead. And there are three responses. You can group the responses into three categories. And the first response we see from the religious elite. These folks are determined not to be impressed by Jesus. Because that would mean sacrificing their own position of power and privilege. So they choose to be callous, hardened, unimpressed. They make a point of responding by not responding. Jesus has come saying the kingdom of God is at hand. He invites all to follow him. But the scribes and Pharisees of every age... Refuse to follow him, and that remains true when the resurrection comes. They'd rather reign in hell than serve in heaven. But that's not the only response that misses the mark. We find it in the women in the crowd. One of them shouts, Blessed is the womb that bore you, the breasts at which you nursed. And Jesus responds, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. The effectiveness, the impact of Christians walking in the power of the Holy Spirit is hampered by those who have responded to the Lord's invitation but act as if they're still imprisoned by their guilt. Jesus loved his mother. I mean, they're talking about his mother. He loved his mother. She was very exemplary in many ways. But just because none of the women in the crowd got to give birth to the Messiah, which was sort of a goal, 
it didn't mean the opportunity to do something great for God had passed them by. Sometimes we think we've lived with a missed chance. Jesus recognizes it can feel convenient to uh, give ourselves an excuse. Oh, I could have served God. I missed my opportunity. I'm stuck with a meaningless life. I don't have to try anymore. They're locked in a prison with the key in their own hands. There's a right response, and we see Jesus give two examples in, his, in our passage. Those who have an opportunity to witness or to hear of or to see lived out in a neighbor or friend, his life shouldn't be callous or unimpressed. Shouldn't be unresponsive. They shouldn't act as if recognizing that Jesus is Lord won't change their lives. They need to be like the Queen of Sheba and the people of Nineveh. All it takes is for them to All it takes is for them to do what Jesus says, hear the word of God and obey it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Are you listening for the word of God? We need to seek the word, like the Queen of Sheba. From Proverbs to the letter of James, we are taught to value wisdom. Wisdom isn't only found in books. Wisdom isn't only found in in the stories of our senior citizens, although some are remarkable that way. Proverbs 1.7 says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's where you start. And no doubt that's how Solomon started Queen of Sheba's lessons. What does God say? Study the word and apply it. And also, he says, turn like the people of Nineveh. The, uh, the word to repent is a change of mind. It's a change of mindset. It's going to involve turning in your life's direction, sometimes 180 degrees. The reading from, no from Jonah ended, God saw what they had done, that they had turned from their evil ways, and he did not do the calamity he had been going to do. Let's be real. For many of you, you love God. But there's one thing that you know God does not like, but you want to say it's only one thing. This is a time for reflection. This is a time for coming to the cross. That only one thing is not just one thing. It's the nose of a camel and it's under your tent. When your camel stands, your life will be turned upside down. So, let me encourage you to kick the camel in the snout in the name of Jesus. You know, the recovery community has a phrase, take a searching moral inventory. It's a Christian practice that the, the Christian founders of AA brought in. We would echo the words of St. Paul, examine yourself. A simple way is to take the fruit of the Spirit that you can find in Galatians 5, 22, 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And just take the time and ask God to show you how you're doing in each one. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yep, yep, yep. You know, that's the one. Maybe it's time. If we love Jesus, if we mean it when we call him Lord, we will want to demonstrate his life in us in each of those ways. You know, Lord, I renounce my behaviors that are at odds with any of the fruit of your spirit. Change me. Help me to walk in ever-increasing obedience. Jesus wants us to hear the word of God and obey it. What is the word of God? Well, it's not rocket science. 
The way of Jesus is easy to put into words, for his yoke is easy. But it will take your whole life, and you'll still be getting better at it. The plaque on the stone by the corner bench has the motto that guides our youth. It's also the first two-thirds of our irreducible core. Love God, love people. Those are the two great commandments. Jesus shows us what love is, what it looks like. And he said, on those two things, love God, love your neighbor, hang all the law and the prophets. What would be the loving thing to do? What would love the way Jesus loved and loved? Second part of, this, of a summation of the word of God is that we are to listen and obey to his call to be about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God requires people to turn away from the kingdom of self. The kingdom of God is a privilege to live in, but to enter in we require that God is king, not us. In the kingdom of God, God rules. All who will can enter. Jesus is not here for our entertainment. He took up the heroic task of bearing the penalties that were due to you and me. He, he bore them. You don't have to bear the guilt in your own life of something in your past. It was his mission to bear it, and he was able. He put death to death and rose from death. That was the sign that changes people's mind. Jesus' resurrection is God shouting, turn around, to travelers on a dead-end road. He invites us, urges us, calls to us to heed the warning. And he answers every cry for help. I'd like to invite you to join me now for a moment of prayer. Lord, I renounce my behaviors that are at odds with any of the fruit of your spirit. Change me and help me to walk in ever-increasing obedience. God, we thank you that you love us so much that you want us to know you. And we pray that you would give us, in these moments, a time of reflection, a time of self-seeking, that you can, that we allow you to shine your light into our lives so that we might be healed. Come search our hearts in these moments of silence. Lord, thank you that those things that you are urging us to let go of, once we do, we will find we are freer than we've ever been. Work your mercy, 
your grace, your wonder way of reconstructing and resurrecting us now and in the hours and days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Let's stand together and we're going to sing Search Me, O God in the hymnal at number 460. you if there's anything that you're kind of struggling with seek out a deacon find me or one of the pastors be happy to sit and pray and care for you receive the benediction lord send us forth into this world cleansed by your grace with our lives direction heading your way By your grace, allow us to encourage others to join the path, to make progress on your path. And Lord, put your spirit on us that we find your grace for each new day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.